See that? No hands. I can also carry a basket full of firewood on top of my head. Take some practice, it's just all about the balance. Well, we got a big one here. That was a big one. Ah, the sun's starting to hit my cutting area. Oh. Oh. Gave myself a chiropractic adjustment there. Oh, that felt lovely. This thing's still working? That's a miracle. All right, well. Hello everybody, this is Michael Lee back with more Lumberjack Fire Safety Work. Let's get it. This video is going to be step-by-step -step instructions on how to cut small diameter, dirty old, burnt hardwoods. Extremely hard woods. This is Manzanita and Toyon, also referred to as Toyon Berry. Same family as Madrone and Eucalyptus. In Australia, they call it blue gum. This stuff's all harder though. Uh, Manzanita and Toyon are harder than Madrone. Madrone's harder than Eucalyptus or blue gum. Uh, I've, I cut all of them routinely every week. And uh, Toyon and Manzanita are the hardest. Madrone is just right behind them it, with the hardness. Uh, it's tricky to it's tricky to cut this on account of it being so hard and the diameter of the wood being so small. Now you'll see how all of this is burnt here. The campfire ripped through this area five years ago and uh, burnt burnt most of everything. Uh, and it kind of looks cool. These, these wood, this type of wood, is so hard. It doesn't really burn the inside. It just leaves like these skeleton <laughs> trees around the landscape. It looks really cool, uh, but it is a fire hazard. This stuff burns hot. Now you may be thinking, why are you wasting your time with this small wood? It's because it's extremely hard, dense, and it burns hot, but it also just burns forever. And it's just the best firewood. Uh, Madrone included. It's just the best firewood, I think, at least where I live. So uh, I make firewood for the property owners I work for, so that's why I'm taking the time to cut this small wood. Now to cut this wood, it's all about using your tip. So let's use this one as an example. You want to cut with your tip, okay? Just in case you get kicked back, the bar has a long distance to travel, whereas if you're bent over and cutting like that, it'll get you right in the face. It's very easy to get kicked back on hard, small wood. Another reason you wanna use your tip is that just in case the wood gets pulled back into you, you also have a little bit of distance and you can move your legs out of the way. But you really want to be careful to cut the wood just barely with your tip to prevent it from being pulled into your shins. This is like getting hit in the shin with uh, Barry Bonds swinging a Louisville slugger at you. It will leave a...
All right, we're back, everybody. Sorry about that. You were overheating in the sun. I had to move you to the shade. Okay, now where were we? We're cutting this extremely hard wood here. And I believe where I left off was telling you already got some cut while you guys were overheating so sorry you missed all that but you want to just barely touch with the tip you don't want to start cutting like that and you certainly don't want to start cutting like that you just want to barely hit it with your tip that way you won't pull this extremely hard wood back into your shins and uh, it's like you know, getting hit with a Louisville slugger swung by Barry Bonds right in your shin. It will leave a golf ball sized lump uh, for 24 hours on your shin. Now, of course, I've never done that, but maybe some of you have. <laughs> yeah, right. I make mistakes every five seconds. Uh, another thing, you don't want to have a brand new, extremely sharp, chain when you're cutting dirty burnt extremely hard wood like this once again this is toyon and manzanita the hardest wood i've ever cut in my life it will dull your chain extremely quickly so you want to don't waste your time putting on a brand new chain or sharpening your chain precisely before doing this it's going to dull your chain quick anyways it's better to actually have a medium intensity uh, sharpness to your cutters and you also want to have the rakers set uh, relatively high just a little bit below your working corner so that that will also prevent you from pulling the wood into your shins less talking more doing let's get it Ah! <laughs> 
a piece of toy on. This is it, the hardest wood I've ever cut in my life. Gotta get rid of this nasty root ball first. This is toy on. Careful, everybody, careful. Whoa, mama. how we did here sorry you guys overheated you kind of missed a lot of the action there you get the point though right how I was cutting this you notice how I was putting my boot on it to hold it in place you only need to do that if it's not heavy enough to stay put on its own um, and then you don't you only have to do that if it's not like weighted down by a bunch of other wood you know, you only want to use your, your boot to kind of brace it to keep it in place if uh, you feel like it's going to get pulled back into you. On some of the bigger branches that I cut that you guys missed, I didn't have to brace it with my foot. I could just cut it with the tip and it was heavy enough to stay in place. But look at the inside of the manzanita. It's like a rust color. When you cut manzanita when it's still alive, it's a bright orange. And then after it dies, it turn, it kind of rusts. And then the outside gets darker, turns black. This is uh, actually pink. Um, when, when, when manzanita's alive, the bark is pink and it peels and it looks exactly like madrone bark. Now madrone, you cut it open and it's pink and purple on the inside, whereas manzanita is orange. Manzanita is also smaller. And then there's some blue oak here on the bottom that I just threw in for a a foundation so let's look at some toy on now this has been burnt by the campfire but you can see how it grows it gets pretty big look at how big that trunk is this is gonna be good firewood but the campfire came through and burnt it but the way that it regenerates is through suckers growing out of the burnt stump so you can see how big this thing used to be before it was burnt and now it's regenerating Toyon loves fire. They just gobble it up. Burn, burn me more. Burn me every five years. That's what it wants. Oaks like to be burnt every four to five years too. So 
This will be a little bit more tricky because it's got all this, all these wicked twigs coming off of it. But uh, let's work on this toy on next.
There. Look how much better that looks. Alright, let's finish strong here. I'm going home after this. I need some water. <laughs> 